How you doing today, my brother? Ooh. My brother, did you know that destruction is coming to America? Did you know that? World War III is coming to America. That's right. And that's in the Bible. Right. Have you ever heard that before? Let's read it for the brother real quick. Read. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 14. Uh -huh. The second bow is paired. What's your name, my brother? Johnny. Johnny? Johnny, come a little bit closer. Right now, the Bible says the second woe has passed. What does woe mean? It means destruction, right? Now it says the second destruction has passed. What is that second destruction? In the 1940s, when there was World War II, right? God says that has passed. Right. Guess what? Read what you got. And behold, and look, right? Read. The third woe. The what? The third woe. God says the third woe. The third destruction is what? It's coming. Now I have a question for you. What is that destruction going to be about? Give me Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 5. Let's read it out of the Bible. Now Johnny, have you ever heard before that nuclear fire is coming to Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America? Have you ever heard that before? From who? Who you heard that from, bro? From the Bible? You read the Bible? Okay, so you believe in the Bible. All praises to the Most High. Read what you got. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 5. Come on. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise Come on. and garments rolled in blood. Come on. But this shall be with burning. This battle, this war, World War III, read, shall be with burning. It shall be with what? With burning. Burning, right? What is that talking about? Nuclear destruction. That's right. Nuclear fire, bro. You see all those nukes that they've been creating? Right? You think they just have them on display as trophies? No, they're going to use them, bro. Right. But I have a question for you. How can you escape that nuclear destruction? Getting saved. Okay, what does that mean? To be saved. Huh? Getting closer to God, that's good. That's good, that's very good. But how do we get closer to God? Do you know? How do we get closer to God? Give me Luke chapter 12 and verse 32. I got you, Johnny. How you doing, my brothers? We're going over nuclear destruction. And we're going over how we can be saved from the destruction that is coming to this land, to this country. Now read what you got. Luke chapter 12 and verse 32. Luke chapter 12 and verse 32. Read out. Fear not, little flock. So don't fear, Johnny. Even though World War III is coming to America, don't worry yourself. That's why we are here. We are here for you. We are here to save souls. That's right. We don't want our brothers and sisters to die. Read. For it is your father's good pleasure. It is who? Your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. To do what? Give you the kingdom. So now, God wants to give you the kingdom. The kingdom of what? The kingdom of heaven. That's when we're going to be ruling, bro. My brothers, Johnny, don't you want to be a ruler? Don't you want to be a prince? Don't you want to be a king? When you got servants working for you? Don't you want that? That's what God is promising you, Johnny. But how do you gain that? How do you gain that eternal salvation? Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Let's get it for Johnny. Johnny, I want you to take a look right here. Do you know who you are according to the Bible? Do you know what God calls you, Johnny? God calls you an Israelite. That's right. I want you to take a look over here on this side. Come a little bit closer. Come take a look, my brother. 
I know my brother Abe, but I'm teaching you how to escape the nuclear destruction. I'm showing you how to get salvation, bro. This information, Johnny, you're not going here anywhere else. Come on, my brother, walk with me. So over here, we have American blacks, right? This is what they call us. This is what our oppressor called us, American black, right? Look at what God calls us. Judah, you're from the tribe of Judah. Do you know what that means, Johnny? That means you will praise a God, bro. You see what I'm saying? Salvation is for you. Read what you got. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Come on, now listen to this, Johnny. Repent ye therefore. Do what? Repent ye therefore. God says repent. Now what does it mean to repent? Do you know? Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 13. Ask for forgiveness? Okay, and what else? I gotta go. Hold on, Johnny, Johnny, what, 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 he want to go to work. But I bet you, if he wants a big black booty, guess what you're going to do? Oh, master, I can't come in today. I got to call up because I'm sick, master. But when it comes to the word of God, oh, we got to go to work all of a sudden. How you doing, my brothers and sisters? Y'all doing well today? All praises to the Most High. My brother, what's your name, my brother? Manuel. Emmanuel? Emmanuel. Manuel. What about you, sis? Lupe. Lupe. Okay, all praises to the Most High. So what we're doing is that we're teaching our people who we are according to the Bible. Now, I want you to take a look at this sign right here. Okay? And do you identify with any of these names on this sign? I'm sorry? You've never saw this before? But wait a minute, that's in the Bible. What is your father's uh, nationality, if you don't mind me asking? Mexican. Mexican. Okay, what about you, my sister? Are you Mexican as well? Guess what God calls you? God calls you Issachar. That's right. Issachar means he is hired. Do you know what that means, bro? Have you ever seen your brothers and sisters always working? always in construction, always doing laborers work. Why? Because you got the skills, you got the talent, you got the expertise, so everybody want to hire you. That's what God calls you. You ain't Mexican because guess what? That's what the conquistadors called you. Yeah? Ponce de Leon, Hernan Cortez, Francisco Pizarro. When they came and conquered your people, we were the same people. Guess what they labeled you as? Mexican, right? That's a slave name. That's a derogatory term. God calls you Issachar from the 12 tribe of the nation of Israel. That's who you are, my brother. My brother, you're a prince. My sister, you're a princess. So now we're talking about repentance. Now I see you got that, uh, that, that cross on your neck. Now, I want to ask you a question, my sister. Knowing that you're from the tribe of Issachar, one of the greatest tribes in this nation, did God ordain us to wear a cross on our neck? Is that biblical? Can, can we get it out of the Bible for you real quick? Can we show you something? All praises to the Most High. Just finish out what you got, what I have you holding, and then we're going to get to Matthew chapter 16 and verse 25. Read what you got. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. Uh -huh. Examine yourself. Do what? Examine yourself. So now we're going to do some self-examination. Meaning that we're going to look at our actions and see if it lines up with the word of God. Is that okay? Can someone give me the Zion events, please, and look for our cross? Uh, so now, finish that out. Whether ye be in the faith. Do you have faith in Jesus, my sister? What about you, my brother? Do you have faith in Jesus? You don't have faith in Jesus? Okay, I got you. We can work on that. But my sister says she has faith. 
So I'm going to deal with that a little bit because I see she have that cross. Now we're going to get it out of the Bible. Read. Prove your own self. Do what? Prove your own self. Come on. No, ye not your own selves. Because we know what we deal with. We know the issues we face. And guess what we have to do? We have to read the Bible and see how we can change the problems that are within us. Like lust, like adultery, covetousness, so on and so forth, right? Come on. No, ye not your own selves. How that Jesus Christ is in you. Because guess what? my brother, my sister, Jesus Christ is within you as well, my brother, right? So now, get me, uh, read the cross for me real quick. Now, I want to show you something, my brother, real quick, my brother, come a little bit closer. Now, my sister right here, she has on a cross. Now, a lot of our people, we wear that cross a lot of times. Now, is that biblical? Give me Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24. Let's read out of the Bible and let's see what God says about the cross. Because a lot of our people wear it, right? Read what you got. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24. Bring it out. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, uh -huh. If any man will come after me, uh -huh. let him deny himself uh -huh. and take up his cross. And do what? Take up his cross uh -huh. and follow me. So he says to take up your cross and follow Christ. Now is he saying to put a cross on your neck? What does it mean to take up your cross and follow after Christ? Give me Philippians chapter 2 and verse 8. Hold that. Give me Philippians chapter 2 and verse 8. Let's see what the cross actually represents. Because how did Jesus Christ die? My brother, what you got? How did Jesus die? You're not into the Bible? You're not into Jesus? But he came for you, bro. And Jesus Christ looked just like you do. He came to save you. Not for the white Jesus, right? But that's not biblical. That's an Edomite called Cesare Borgia. He's the devil the Bible speaks of. But this is the true, accurate depiction of who Jesus Christ looked like. Just a sidebar. So I want to get on that cross real quick so my sister can get edified. Read what you got. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 8. In being found in fashion as a man... He humbled himself. Now, this is talking about Jesus Christ, right? Because he came in man's flesh, right? Although he's the son of God, he took it upon himself to endure the afflictions that we face. Because the scripture says we have no high priest that don't uh, understand or know of our infirmities, right? Read. He humbled himself. He did what? Humbled himself. He humbled himself. Now, let's see what that means read and became obedient unto death he became what obedient unto death Come on. even the death of the cross even the death of the what of the cross so when it says so go back to matthew chapter 15 16 and verse 24 when it says to wear the cross it means to be obedient unto death because if you call yourself a Christian, are you a Christian, my sister? Well, I was raised Catholic. You were raised a Catholic? Okay. So you don't, you, what are you, you consider yourself a, a Catholic? Is that what you're saying? Okay. Okay. So why do you wear that cross if you're not a Christian? I guess this is the way I was raised. How you were raised? Okay. Understood, a lot of us, we were raised like that. But guess what? When we learned the truth, we came out of Catholicism. Did you know that the Roman Catholic Church, right? They were the ones who ordained our enslavement as a people under Pope uh, Nicholas V of Rome. Did you know that he was the one who orchestrated and instituted that our people would be chained and shackled? Did you know that? It is because of Catholicism, while we as a people, right, are severely illiterate as to who we are and to who our God is, right? right? right. That's what Catholicism teaches us, right? right? But you, do you find Catholicism in the Bible? No. So where did that come from? It came from man, my sister. It's not biblical. Read what you got. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24. Now, I just want to chew on a little bit more about the cross. Read. 
Then said Jesus unto his disciples, uh -huh. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. And do what? Take up his cross uh -huh. and follow me. And do what? Follow me. And do what? Follow me. So it says we have to take up our cross, meaning that we have to endure the sufferings that Christ endured. Give me 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 12. Because that's what the cross represents. What you have on your net, my sister, it's an idol. And we're going to get it out of the Bible. When the Bible tells us to wear our cross and to take up our cross, my brother, how are you doing today? We're talking about the cross, right? The crucifix. It's actually going into we as a people being obedient unto death, just like the Messiah did. Because if we call ourselves Christians, the anointed ones, guess what we're going to do? We're going to follow after Christ's example. Read what you got. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 12. Uh -huh. If we suffer, if we what? If we suffer, Come on. we shall also reign with him. Reign with who? With him. With Christ. Because guess what? Christ is coming back to rule. Right. And when he comes back, he ain't going to offer out gums and teddy bears and lollipops. He's coming to destroy. Right. Did you know that? Read what you got. If we deny him, if we what? Deny him. By you wearing that cross, you're actually denying Christ. Because that's what they use to execute our king. Do you have a mother? Do you have a father, my brother? If your mother died by a bullet wound, are you going to then use a bullet and put it on your pendant and walk around with it? Hell no. So why are we going to wear a pendant which represents the death of our Messiah? That's what they use to conquer our king. And now our people walk around with it like we think it's a fashion, like we think it's something good. It is not. Read what you got. He also will deny us uh -huh. if we believe not, yet he abided faithful. He cannot deny himself. So now let's get the cross in the Zonovan Compact Bible Dictionary. Let's see what the cross represents. You got what I want, right? Read what you got. Cross. The cross existed in four different forms. The word cross is often used... To... Now, my sister, here's the point, right? Read it again. The word cross... The word cross... Is often used figuratively... Is also... Is what? Often used figuratively... Figuratively. What does figuratively mean? What does figuratively mean? What you got, bro? Not literally. My brother right here. You smart, bro. It's not literal. It was metaphorical. It was symbolic. God didn't tell us to put a pendant in the shape of a cross and walk around with it. Right. So now, if that's not biblical, what is that that you got in the neck, my sister? Huh. Give me Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 18. Let's see what that is. And I understand you didn't know before, but guess what? That's why we are here. We're out here to edify our people about the problems we face in our communities, right? And how we can provide solution to those problems. That right there is a problem, my sister. That right there represents idolatry. That's right. When we depend on a crucifix for hope and salvation, guess what God calls it? Let's find out. Read what you got. Habakkuk, chapter 2 and verse 18. Read it out. What profiteth the graven image? What do what? Profiteth the graven image. That thing right there was graven by a man, right? It was graven with silver, and then they made it a crucifix. God says that doesn't have any profit. You want to know why? Because it ain't real. Right. It, ain't, it ain't. It's fake. Right. Read that the maker thereof have graven it. Hold on, my sister. Read. That the great, that the maker thereof have graven it, the molten image, and a teacher of lies. A what? A teacher of lies. That right there is a teacher of lies. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 13 and verse 10. Why is it a teacher of lies? Because this is what it represents. Cesare Borgia. That right there is a white man on your neck, my sister. Bring it out. Jesus Christ right. is not white. Right. Not according to the Bible. That right there 
was a man called Cesare Borgia. He was a son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome. He was a le he was a homosexual. He was a incest lover. He had sex with his sister. And now our people walk around with Cesare Borgia on our necks, which is a lie. Read. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13 and verse 10. But miserable are they. What? But miserable are they. And in dead things. In what? In dead things. That's a dead thing right there. That right there, my sister, cannot give you salvation. Because a lot of times when our people go through problems, we go through issues, we go through trials, what do we do? We take the pennant and we kiss it. And then we put it up in the sky like it's going to help us. Like it's going to die. Like it's going to save us. No, it ain't. God says that's a dead thing. Meaning it cannot move. It cannot sleep. It cannot eat. It cannot breathe. So it cannot help us, my sister. Read. And in dead things is there hope. Is there what? Is there hope. We cannot have hope in that, my sister. We have to have hope in the one true God of this Bible. Yeah, right. We have to have hope in the true depiction of who Jesus Christ looks like, right. which is a black man. Yes, right. Read. Who called them God. Who what? Called them God. That's what we do. We look at that crucifix and we call it our God. Read. Which are the works of men's hands. Which are the what? The works of men's hands. Man made that, my sister. Are you going to trust in man? Or are you going to trust in the Bible? Bring it out. What are you going to do, my sister? Are you going to keep that on your neck? So what are you going to do? Give me First Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 9. Let's encourage, let's exhort the sister a little bit more. Because according to the Bible, my sister, when you have that on, you're in the midst of idolatry. Do you know what God calls that? God calls that a sin. Did you know that? To be in the midst of idolatry is a sin? What is the wages of sin? What is the consequences of punishment for sin? And I'm not trying to, you know, beat down on the sister. I'm trying to, and this is love right here. Because we've never knew this before. A lot of reasons why we as a people continue to be at the bottom, my brother. The reason why we the last hired, the first fired. The reason why we in the ghettos and slums of anywhere you go in this world is because of this right here. White man, Jesus. Read what you got. First Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 9. Read out. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you. And how ye turned to God. Uh, you what? Turn to God from idols. From what? Idols. So you have to turn to God from idols. You have to take that pendant off my... You can keep the chain, but you got to take that off, and guess what you got to do? You got to put it in that trash. Right. That's what God says. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 25. This out. is how we turn to God, my sister. My out. princess, this is how we repent. This is how we change. You see that? My brother, we, but this is trying to listen, bro. Are y'all married? Y'all married? Y'all not married? So wait a minute, y'all together? So y'all in the midst of fornication. Bring it out. My brother, that's not your wife. So why are you bringing her away? The sister want to listen. Don't take her from the word of God. If you want to make her your woman, guess what you got to do? You got to marry her. Yes, right. Because right now you're in the midst of fornication. Right. That's another sin according to the Bible. Right. Read. Deuteronomy. Chapter 7 and verse 25. Hey, y'all listen to this while y'all walk away. Read. The graven images. The what? The graven images. The crucifix. Come on. Of their gods. Of Sejure Borgia. Shall ye burn with fire. Shall we what? Burn with fire. Come on, keep it on. Burn with fire. You know, rocket. Burn with fire. is men leading by example.
nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. His word. His word. His word.